What is going on, ARMY? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today is January 31st, and in the entire month of January, we have been going through BTS's very first album, Too Cool for School. And in this video, we are going to be doing the final review for the entire album. That means we are going to be discussing at least a little bit for each single track. That includes track number one, intro, Too Cool for School. Track number two, We Are Bulletproof Part 2. Track number three, Skit, Circle Room Talk. Track four, No More Dream. That is the title track of the entire album. Track number five, Interlude, an interesting one. Track number six, Like. Track number seven, Outro, Circle Room Cipher. But if you are not familiar with the uh, physical CD, there are two hidden tracks on the physical disc that are not available uh, on any streaming services online. So hidden track number one is another skit on the start line, and hidden track number two is Road or Path. We will be discussing every single one, including the hidden tracks in this video. So without further ado, let us get into track number one. <laughs> Intro, too cool for school. I like the opening to this track for some reason. It's It really caught me off guard the first time that I heard it, but it's got that sort of old-timey, kind of even radio feel to it with the guy with such a heavy American accent saying, we're now going to progress to some steps which are a bit more difficult. Ready, set, and begin. I don't know why. It's so random, but I really, really like it. And then it has RM sort of jumping in, and he says a specific line that I think perfectly encapsulates not just this album or the theme of this album, but even more so BTS as a whole. And that line is, we tell our story in a carefree way on behalf of those in their 10s and 20s. That line is so important. And we see a lot more of it specifically in track four. We see uh, a level of vulnerability that a lot of young people can relate to in the hidden track. And we also see a little bit in track number two, uh, which we'll be getting to shortly. But that's what BTS really wants to do. They want to express thoughts and opinions that young people might be afraid to express, but we all know that they're thinking, and we all know that they're thinking of them because when we when we were their age, or I'm still in my 20s, but when we were young like them, that's what we were thinking as well. Everyone has these thoughts, and sometimes we're too nervous to express them. And something I want to say off the bat going going forward, not just with this album or or you know as a whole really. BTS is from South Korea, and I was born in America. And while I'm sure some things are the same and some things are universal, there are some cultural differences that I have to take into consideration, and I have to also respect. And I just want to make sure that when I'm expressing my thoughts and sort of taking what I'm taking away from BTS and maybe I think that they're trying to convey, I don't want to come off as a, you know insensitive or disrespecting of another culture. Uh, I, I just want to put that out there, make sure that's clear. And everything that I'm saying, I'm taking from my perspective of what I've uh, grown up with and what I've gone through, because I went through school just like everyone else did. So I have my own interpretations of it. And I have read a little bit of the cultural differences, especially in the education system of something like South Korea versus in America. And while it's similar, there are differences that I have to be aware of. And I want to make sure that... Um, you know, that's conveyed before I start saying things. Um, I just want to say I'm saying it from my perspective in a non judgmental way. We are Bulletproof Part 2. What can I say about this track? Quite a bit. We'll talk a little bit about the music video, we'll talk a little bit about the lyrics, but before we jump into the song, I think we should talk about the elephant in the room. Why is it called? part two and where is part one if you're baby army and you picked up this album and you're like where's part one am i missing something you're not really missing something if you want to listen to part one part one is available unofficially on soundcloud it is available through bts officially but it is an unofficial song 
it was never properly released and it was never made uh, to be sold. You can just listen to it on SoundCloud for free. It was originally recorded by different members. RM was still a part of the original recording, but it was re-recorded later and released for free on SoundCloud as a part of BTS Festa, I believe in year two, celebrating their anniversary of BTS. So if you're like, where's part one? There you go. I think I'll actually link it in the description box down below. Now that we talked about part one, let's talk about part two. I love this song. This song is really energetic. It's got a, it really gets the blood pumping and it might be my favorite beat and most hyped up song of the album. It starts off with what? What? With RM and it transitions over to JK and I love JK, especially in the music video. He has a line where he rhymes his name with the entire country and he says, the name is JK and the scale is nationwide. I love that line. I love it so damn much. It's creative and it's fun and it's kind of badass, I will admit. But the hardest line on the entire track is the one that Suga says. And I think there's a lot of meaning behind it. It's only three lines long, one line in particular, but there's a lot to take away from it. Against double standards and so much opposition, I broke my limit. On the other hand, for you guys, contacted by your company by luck and got labeled as rappers because you can't sing. The rapper title is an extravagance. That line, especially that last one, you can't sing so you got labeled as a rapper, is the sickest burn on the entire track. And there's a couple of things that I personally take away from that whole, that those three lines and that last line in particular. The thing to remember is that BTS is brand new and they're debuting. But the other part, it's not just that they're brand new and they're a brand new group, it's also that their label, Big Hit, is also brand new. They have no real deep connections, they are much smaller, and they don't have any pull with anyone already established. So they're working against the odds, both with the debuters, but also as the label. So when they're going to form a group, they don't have the luxury of, okay, well, I know him, so we'll just pull him. No, 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 no. Every single member that was selected as a trainee and eventually to debut was picked because they had something to bring to the table. They did not have the luxury of being like, okay, well, I know you, I know you, I know you, I know you. No, 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 no. You, no nepotism here, no favoritism here. I'll be honest with you, I'm pretty sure this was just straight up business. Are you good enough to do this? Yes, welcome to the team. Otherwise, I'm sorry, but we can't do it right now. <laughs> and that's what I think is so important. Double standards, opposition. The opposition, they got a lot of pushback for stupid reasons, which we'll discuss. But if you couldn't rap, you weren't there. And just because you you can't sing doesn't mean you get to be a rapper. You can't sing too bad. If you're a part of BTS, if you can't sing, if you can't rap, if you can't dance, if you can't do anything, I'm sorry, but you're not here. <laughs> That's pretty much it. The rapper title for at least for BTS, was earned. You don't get it as a consolation prize. They don't hand out titles like candy. You can sing, you're a singer, you can rap, you're a rapper, you can dance, you're a dancer. Other than that, see ya. I'm sorry. That is what I love about that line. Sugar ain't holding back. Now let's talk about that opposition. And let's talk about what they mean by we are bulletproof. There's two ways that that bulletproof is used, at least in my opinion. And it's also why they are called the Bulletproof Boy Scouts. We'll talk about that more heavily at the end, but we're gonna talk about one way of the two I think it's being used as uh, with bulletproof. Opposition. Like I said, no name, no name label, and no one knows who these individuals are uh, because they, they haven't debuted yet and they're getting ready to debut. They got a lot of hate. They got a lot of hate. RM and Sugar were already established underground rappers. They were still young, but you know they already had a bit of a name and, and a little bit of recognition for them already. And when it came out that they were going to be part of an idol group, they got mocked for it uh, for a number of reasons. You know, uh, what are you doing? You're a hardcore rapper and now you're an idol? Not only that, you're too ugly. What an awful thing to say. 
That is horrendous, and I don't like that one bit. I was gonna say <laughs> I was gonna say a curse word, uh, but uh, we'll try to keep it as clean as possible in this review. I don't like that one bit. Okay, and you know, singers and rappers. We discussed this a little bit earlier, but if you're a rapper like Sugar is Rapper Man, or RM is Rapper Man, or J-Hope is Rapper Man, you earn those titles. You're not just given them, number one. And number two, you don't get to label anybody as anything. They get to label themselves if they so choose to have those labels. At the end of the day, Sugar is a rapper. RM is a rapper. J-Hope is a rapper. J-Hope is a dancer. But they get to label themselves. They are, they, they are rappers, but they aren't. Sugar's not a rapper. Sugar's not a singer. Sugar's not a dancer. Sugar is Sugar, okay? He's Yungi. That's his name, and that's who he is. No one gets to label them other than themselves. That's, that, that's the disrespect that they were going through and the discrimination that they were going through because they didn't have connections and pulls. That's why they're bulletproof. Despite all the shots that were taken at them, it bounced off of them, okay? Because they were that good. They practiced that hard. That's why they're bulletproof. One of the reasons why they're bulletproof. We'll talk about the other one probably later on and, and, and closer to the end. That's why they're bulletproof. We are bulletproof because you can take as many shots. Doesn't matter. I've strengthened up my armor. I've worked hard and we're going to kill it. And it's okay to have those negative thoughts. You know, we're nothing. I have nothing to my name. My profile is nothing on it. My resume is blank. Doesn't matter. You worked hard. You're going to succeed. End of story. We are bulletproof. And RM has this line. I think it's genius. Look at me carefully. Placing a period on impossible. I'm possible. Goddamn. Beautiful line. Beautiful line. Nothing's impossible. I'm possible. If RM wants to be a rapper, if RM wants to be a dancer, if Jin, Jin and RM, they were the two members that were the most, that were struggling with dancers. Bro, they killed it in the choreography. I don't care. Why? Because even if they weren't good at dancing in the beginning, they got good at, get, at dancing by practice and determination and just absolutely never stopping. There's something to say about that. You know, some people are naturally talented at dancing. You know, apparently Sugar can pick up dancing a little bit easier than the other members. Jimin and J-Hope, they're excellent at dancing. You know, everybody has their strengths, but everyone also has their weaknesses. Jin and RM's weaknesses were dancing. Not anymore. They went crazy with the dance moves. Because this is something that everyone should know. Just because you're not good at something doesn't mean you're not going to ever be good at it. You'll never be good at it if you don't practice. We all start at zero. You don't start at level 100. Now, could you be naturally gifted? Sure. But even at naturally gifted, you're not at a level 100. Naturally gifted, you start at level 25 instead of level 0. You still got to work on it. You still got to practice it. And with Jin and RM, they might have started off at level 1. But by the end of it, when they debuted, they were level 100. They succeeded where they were weak, and they overcame that, that difficulty. They overcame that weakness. And that is why they are bulletproof. Let's move on to track number 3. <laughs> Track three, skit, circle, room, talk. Now we talked a little bit about this when we were discussing another skit, and we'll discuss that one a little bit later. But most of the time when you see the word skit, you sort of are like, okay, it's just sort of like a one-off, it's not that important. And in this one, you know, it's kind of setting up track number four, which is very important. Here we have... The boys, they're in school, they're talking about playing hooky, but they're also talking about their dreams and what they want to become. And I think it's pretty important in particular with two members. We have RM and Sugar talking about wanting to rap. We have Jimin and, and J-Hope talking about they want to dance. Those are their dreams. That's what they like to do. We have V randomly talking about the saxophone. But what's most important here is Jin and JK. Because, you know, those are established things. Dancing, rapping, playing the saxophone. Those are dreams, right? Jin has a very strange dream. And there's nothing wrong with it, but it's different. Jin is dreaming about being like his dad, waking up at 7 a.m., coming home at 6, and eating dinner with his wife. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a great dream. If that's what he wants to do, 
sure. That's a great thing. That means you have a great family life, you have a great job, you're comfortable, you get to spend time with your with your wife. What's wrong with that? That's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But is that his dream for real? Or was his dream changed? When I was young, I wanted to be a Power Ranger, <laughs> right? Now, when I got older, my dreams changed a little bit, but do I want a wife? Do I want a partner? Do I want a spouse so we can, you know, spend time together? Sure. But is that a dream? That's a part of my dream, but is that the dream, the nine to five? That's what he's basically saying. My, I want my dream to be my nine to five so I can go home and eat dinner with my wife. Nothing wrong with that, but where's the dream? Where's the other part of the dream outside of the spouse? That's interesting. And what else is interesting is JK. He doesn't remember his dream. That's also interesting. Is he beginning to have his dream overwritten? He's no longer remembering what his dream is because he's so focused on schoolwork and succeeding. Is that what they're implying with this skit? It could be. We're going to talk about more about dreams and the strangeness of what's going on with JK and Jin, which is also pretty interesting because Jin is the oldest and JK is the youngest. That's also what's pretty interesting. We're going to talk more about dreams or lack thereof in track number four. I almost forgot we can't transition into track number four just yet. The ending of the skit. I was so focused on the members and their relation to the following track, track number four, that I forgot the ending of, of the skit. The skit ends with the boys considering playing hooky, which is very, very bad, especially with all the pressures that are put on them to get an education, but it ends with one of the school teachers screaming at them and being very, very rude. Now... You know, playing hooky's wrong, so the teacher is going to yell at them. But the level of, you know, like, viciousness behind this person's voice is pretty severe. And, you know, instead of playing hooky and doing what they wanted to do... I mean, playing hooky isn't the worst thing in the world. <laughs> you should you should go to school, but you skip a day, who cares? What are you going to lose? One day, whatever. But it does go to show you the pressures that are being put upon them and the aggression that older people, teachers, in this instance, have. So with that, now let's transition over to track four. Track number four, No More Dream. This song is the most important song in the entire album. It is the title track of the album, and it's a, it has a very, very important message behind it. But before we jump into it, I need to preface what I'm going to say with this. Like I said earlier, I'm born in America, and I... As, as a person born in America, I don't know what the life of a person born in South Korea would be, but I am sure that there is some over, overlap when it comes to the pressures that is placed on young people and students. I was a student. I went to high school just like everybody else did. Uh, so I can understand to a degree what they're going through, but it's not one-to-one, -one, and everything that I'm going – that I that – I, kind of understand about what's going on in the education system in South Korea is only from what I read online. It's not what, uh, you know, a, an actual person in South Korea went through. So while I don't know 100%, I can relate to it to a degree, and I'm not trying to uh, supersede what they actually went through with what I understand of it. I think it's important that I say that. Now, I've gotten some comments telling me the the struggles that young people are going through in South Korea when it comes to the education system. I've also read online that they have a very, very high rate of young people uh, doing the permanent solution to a temporary problem because of a lot of pressure and anxiety that they're going through and the need and feeling that they need to succeed. And that is a very serious problem. Uh, and, and I think it's, it's great that BTS made a song that young people can relate to and also have an underlying message behind it that hopefully that can connect to many, pe many young people in uh, Korea. Now, No More Dream is discussing the fact that young people no longer have dreams or goals that they want to accomplish because it is being overwritten by older people, their parents, teachers, people in positions of power, that are telling them you must succeed in school and you must get a high paying job. Now, the pressure and anxiety of that is wrong, but the but 
I would assume most of the time the parents aren't being malicious behind it. Now, this is something that we can all understand worldwide. But the pressures that, that young people in South Korea are going through is, is, is much more, from my understanding, much more intense. It's a very serious problem. So I want to make sure that that's made abundantly clear at the beginning. What they're going through is not the same as everyone else because the rates that the young people are doing the uh, irreversible action is unfortunately very, very high. So I need to make sure that that's established. Now the rest of the stuff, we're taking that in the back of our head, but I'm going to be speaking more so in a universal sense. Uh, that way I'm not, like I said, you, you know, talking about things that I'm not 100% familiar with. Parents, my parents included, wanted me to get a good paying job. Why? Because they wanted what was best for me. Now, what, and they're not wrong. And and what is best for me is to have a good paying job. We talked about this when we were talking about this song alone. But the problem comes when a young person is going through all of that stress, going through all that anxiety to get a job that they might not even like. So they're going through all of that difficulty and they eventually grow up and they get the job and they're and they're still miserable. Can they afford everything in the world if they become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer? Sure. But are they living? Are they? Are they living you know, or are they just a body that's in motion doing what it needs to do to get by? What about those dreams like we saw in the skit? about wanting to dance, about wanting to rap, about wanting to play the saxophone. I'm it, it, Your life cannot strictly be going to work and then coming home. And I know Jin sort of wants that. That's where this really comes into play. Jin wants to go to work so he can come home to his wife. Now, is he living when he's coming home to his wife? Absolutely. He would marry someone that he likes and he's super happy to be there. And there is great value to be taken from that. There's nothing wrong with saying I go to work to provide for my family and that's that is my life. That's a uh, that's a noble and great thing. But it's also important to have hobbies, to have dreams, to have goals. And the problem is sometimes young people think the only goal is success. It's not. The main goal in life should be happiness and in, and 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 being and bringing happiness to others. And does that mean everyone should be a lawyer? No. That means you should bring value to yourself and to everyone around you. And does that involve making money? Absolutely. You got to survive. You got to provide for your family. But overriding those goals, overriding those dreams with what other people want you to do, that's not right either. They, they say that in the song. Do not let your story be written by someone else. Even if they have the best of intentions, have your goals. And we talked about it already. Do I think you should still go to school and get an education and get a good job? Absolutely. But should you do things that you like to do too? Yes. And that's sometimes what doesn't happen. Young people go, they wake up in the morning, they go to school, they study, they study until 10 o'clock at night and then they go to sleep. That's misery. That's not education. That's misery. I mean, after a certain point, the, the, the brain can only retain so much at a given time. It's important to take breaks. It's important to do things that you like. It actually helps you study more. But sometimes people don't know that. And that's where JK is the biggest concern. He's the youngest, but he's the one who doesn't know what he wants to do. And that's a very common thing as well. I don't, You don't know what you want to do. And sometimes your dreams aren't very well-paying. Like, like with, with V. How many super famous, successful saxophone players are out there? I don't know. But it's not important. It's important not to give them up. That's the gist of the song. Relax. Have dreams. Get an education. But be happy. Even if that means that your job isn't the most successful or highest paying one, are you having a good impact on the world? Are you happy? That's the gist of it. That's the point of it, of this song, and that's the point of life. Keep dreaming. Be happy. Get an education. But don't be miserable. It's a beautiful song with a beautiful message, and it's actually, it is beautiful, but it's also sad. It's The song isn't sad, the reality is. 
And this was a very risky thing by BTS to do because it's very much going against the status quo. Success. They're telling you don't be successful, be happy. I mean, they're not telling you not to be successful, but, you know, they're, they're sort of pushing back. This was a very risky thing. And you have to also give credit to Big Hit because they okayed the song. They could have said no. I mean, they were the one with all the money. They were the one with all the control. They could have said no. We're not doing this. This is too risky. It, it, it would raise too many flags. But they did it anyway. And it's very important that they did. Because a lot of people can, can connect to the song. A lot of people can resonate to the song. And that is why I think it is the most important song in the entire album. To keep dreaming. And sort of try to relieve some of the stress that young people are going through. Now that's something that uh, the older generation has to understand. Because a lot of a lot of external stresses are being put on young people. I don't think that young people would be putting this amount of stress on themselves if it wasn't being pushed on them by other people. That's the importance of this song. And that is why they're also bulletproof. They're pushing against the status quo. Not just from the haters, but from stigmas and from, what would you call it? Not stereotypes, but what's expected of them. They're pushing back and they're going to get a lot of heat for it, but they're bulletproof. They're not, you're, you, their dreams are not going to be shattered. They're not going to allow their, their, their wants and desires and dreams to be overwritten because of society. That's why they're talking to the people in their 10s and 20s. That's why this song is so important. To all the youngsters without dreams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's transition to track five. Track number five, Interlude. This is an interesting song. I like it. It sort of has like a crunkling noise in the very beginning and opening of it. And, and interlude, from what I can remember, I, I'll look up the word. It's sort of like, for example, in a play, that the interlude is like the break point, right? And you go from something super serious like No More Dream you're, and you transition into another song, you're going to need an interlude. That's like the... That's like the, 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 the interlude, the middle point of the album. Something super serious, you need a break. You need to transition off of it. You, it's not always the easiest thing to do. But the melody, I will admit, I like the melody a lot. And even though it's super short and it serves as that break point, it's enjoyable and I thoroughly liked it. I'm not sure if there's anything else to it, but if that's all that it serves as, that nice nice melody to transition into a different type of song going off of something so serious, well done. I liked it a lot. I hope they take that melody and they build off of it. We'll, we'll see. Maybe they won't. Maybe they will. But that was a good melody. I do quite like it. But, like I said, the break point. Let us transition into the next track. Track number six. I like it, or like. This is completely different from the previous ones, but it's damn good. If you watch my reaction to the live performance for Like, you would see how much fun I'm having with this song. And this song, I gotta say, is so much fun. I love it. I don't like it. I love it. It is so much fun. It's that like, you know, we talked about this a little bit. It's like, hey girl, kind of an attitude. It's smooth. They're having so much fun. This is sort of like a, a song that you would put on if you're like trying to flirt with a girl or whatever. Get you in a good mood. It's so smooth. Don't want to be fool. Want to be cool. Oh my God. It's so good. It is a fresh. It's got that R&B feel. I read that comment. It's got that R&B feel. It's got, a, it's got a really good feel to it, you know? We Are Bulletproof Part 2 really gets the blood pumping. No more dream. A bit inspirational. It's designed to really, you know, connect to the young people and say, hey, we get it. We got you. You know, relax. Keep dreaming. Keep pushing forward. Relax, relax, relax. You're not alone in this. A lot of people feel that way, and I know a lot of a lot of people are concerned to express these uh, ideas. That was, you know, no more dream. Well, what I like it, it's got that funness to it. I love it so much. I wasn't expecting it. I said it before and I'll say it again. And even the comments are agreeing with me. And I appreciate the comments. Don't, you know, I always read them. Even if I can't always reply, I always read them. But 
It's fun. It's just fun. And you never know what you're going to get with BTS. There's a lot of different tones going on in this album, and I can appreciate that. I love the, also the fact that they're still addressing experiences and difficulties that young people are going through, 10s and 20s. Our parents, our grandparents, uh, you know, even, even like people in their 30s, we didn't go through social media. I went through social media. You might have gone through social media. You know, we didn't... Older people didn't go through this, so they're still addressing the young people, the 10s and 20s with this one, relating to them on a specific level, because this song is about social media, seeing your ex. You know, if our parents or our grandparents broke up with somebody, right, they'd never see them again almost. They'd never see them with somebody else uh, that, that, you know, young people, they go on social media, they're still following their ex or whatever, or the algorithm shows them a photo of them with somebody else. That hits you in the heart. You're not going to feel good based off of that. I love that. It's still addressing younger people and, and the problems that the people in 10s or 20s are going through. I, I picked that up. Even though it's kind of like a sad song about, a uh, you know, uh, an old fling that still hurts. It still burns a little bit. Um, not in passion, but in, 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 in pain. Uh, it's still a fun song, and I, and I, really, I really, really liked it, actually. <laughs> but I think that's all I'm going to say about the song, Like... I like it a lot, but let's go to our final track, the outro. <laughs> track number seven, Circle Room Cipher. This sort of picks up from the previous skit with the schoolboys being able to have a little bit of downtime. It's kind of an enjoyable one. Uh, it's not too serious. They have them freestyling. I did enjoy the uh, the freestyles that we got from our M. They all got the freestyle, which I actually like. We get to hear each individual member singled out more specifically, which we didn't get to see too too much of in the uh, throughout the album. We did get you know the vocal line did get to have a little bit of representation, but it was enjoyable to have dedicated sections. To each single member and I sort of like how they're like you know kind of like trash talking each other a little bit maybe ridiculing them but they do hype each other up they do uh, uh they do say go tae hyung go tae hyung you know you you, you you get that a little bit and I like that I also do kind of think it's funny poor Jimin my man Jimin he kind of took a shot at V and his raps being like smelly but then when he rapped and they didn't like it they bailed on him that was a little that was a little you know that was a little much, but um, overall, it's enjoyable. It's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of like a, a simpler, more like casual, carefree one. But that isn't actually where the album ends. It is titled outro, and it would be the outro if you're listening to it on Spotify. But there are two hidden tracks. Hidden track number one. Hidden track number one. Skit. On the start line. I am blown away by this. This is RM strictly talking to us. And really getting vulnerable. I read in the comments that the hidden tracks... They're not on every single album. But the hidden tracks are only intended for the true BTS fans. Because in this hidden track... RM specifically in this one, gets very vulnerable with us. And this it's a level of vulnerability that you wouldn't want to share with just anyone. You would only want to share it with people that you know would understand what you're saying. So in this one, we have RM really, you know, discussing uh, the struggles, the deserts, the oceans that he's been through as a trainee and getting ready for that big debut being nervous, but really still wanting to prove himself and and get out there. It's at, he's at the he's at the start line, or the debut is the start line. The debut is the beginning of his career, and he's going to have to run through that path uh, in order to hit the finish line. He's right there, he's right there, and you can see his just. Like I said, his level of vulnerability, it blew me away. I wasn't expecting it. Uh, like I said earlier, with skits, you have a specific thought of what a skit is. Funny, kind of throwaway. This is not that at all. The beautiful piano melody in the background, the simplicity of it, so you could really just focus on what he has to say. It's ingenious. It's great. It's not available anywhere. And I get why. 
it's disappointing because you want as many army to, to really get into it. But it's a level of vulnerability that you don't want just anyone to have. I can respect that. I can understand that. It's a beautiful song. It really, really is. And that leads us to the final track, the final hidden track, where, like I said, when it comes to track number six, Like, completely different in tone. Completely, completely different. It completely caught me off guard. Yeah. The final track, the final hidden track, Path. The continuation of RMs on the start line. This is one hell of a song. Um, And similar to how RM was very vulnerable in the skit, uh, everyone here is very vulnerable. Uh, And they they really expressed to us uh, what was going on with those trainee years. And how, you know, they're, they're ready to debut, but they're still a little hesitant. Three years in Seoul, just working. With nothing to their name. They're working hard. They're putting all that hard work. And we saw a little bit of it. You know, you can go online. You can watch the guides like I have. We have that on the channel. And you can see what they're going through. But they really only... There's only two two ways other than, like, the pre-recorded stuff. Is to live through it, which we'll never be able to do. But to get an account from it from the people themselves. The best way to know what's going on with BTS in their trainee years is to hear them say it is to hear them express what was going on in their head, because they're the only ones that truly know. Nothing to their name. They're trainees. They're nothing. But they're ready to be something. They're lonely, but they have each other. But they were strangers until they became brothers. And that's all they had. Each other. They had the group, you know, big. They had the label. They had big hit, but they really only had each other. And we see that in the in the in the guides. You know, J.K. being the baby of the group, they took care of him, made sure he went to school, made sure he was, you know, he was fed. <laughs> but then you have the other ones, and they're all leaning on each other. They all have strengths. They all have weaknesses. You you have each member who's getting you know shots taken at them. We talked about that. They may be bulletproof, but that doesn't mean that that shot doesn't hit that bulletproof armor and dings them a little bit. They gotta lean on each other. They're ridiculed for whatever. Horrible, but they have each other, a camaraderie, a brotherhood, blood, sweat, and tears. That is something that you can't replicate. You can only get that level of intimacy, of brotherhood. By going through it. It's that level of stress and l- sense of loneliness. They're not they're not with their families, they're with each other. <laughs> you know, they're in their underwear, they're sleeping in the same location, they're eating the same food, they're cooking food for each other. They're getting ready for debut. They tell us point blank. They are a Bang Tan, but what if they went a different way? What if they didn't debut? What if they went a different direction? These are all thoughts that are going through their heads. We wouldn't know this if they didn't tell us. If they didn't convey this to us. That's the genius of the song. That's the beauty of this song. If I didn't know about this hidden track. It would have been a real shame. Because. uh, This is. um, (laughs) This is the problem. You can't pick a favorite. (laughs) I would even say this might be. My favorite track over No More Dream. I don't know. I No. I don't know. I think No More Dream is the most important track. For sure. But as an army, I would say that my favorite track is actually this one. It's a level of vulnerability that the boys are are showing us, that they're they're conveying to us, that um, is not in the other ones. But it's more focused on them. That's what I think separates the two tracks. No More Dream is focused on on, on the youth. This is focused on them. It really lets us know what was going on in their minds. Similar to Born Singer, which is a track um, a little bit different, but it's, 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 it's on that same level. It's a beautiful track, um, and it really, it really shows us them. Uh, so this is my favorite track. The most important track, in my opinion, is No More Dream. But my personal favorite track would be Path, would be this one. Now, those are the nine tracks, 
And I don't know how long this video is, but it's probably a very long one. <laughs> so I'm going to end it with this. This is my conclusion of what the album, I believe, was trying to convey and what I took away from it and my overall thoughts. I think BTS really wanted to change it up when it came to their debut. They wanted to be a little bit different, which is what we talked about a little bit earlier. This was a very risky thing to do. They came out challenging the status quo in Korea with no more dream and really pushing back against the societal pressures that's that they went through and that other young people are going through. That was very risky, uh, especially for Korea. Uh, I, I, you know, from what I could tell, Korea is a pretty conservative country and there's nothing wrong with that. But the level of pressure that a lot of young people are going through is extremely high and it is extremely detrimental to them. So coming out with a track like that was really risky because while the while young people might really like it, there might be, you know, higher ups or people in positions of power that would be like, no. Did it pay off? Yes. Was it was it bold? Oh yeah. And they get even more respect from me from that as well. 100%. I may not live in Korea. I may not know the culture all, all, you know, too, too well. But that has been heavily conveyed to me. This was a very bold thing to do, especially with No More Dream. So my level of respect for them is through the roof. Great message. But the fact that they were bold and brave enough to do it. And you got to give credit to Big Hit. They okayed it. It was their money. And they still okayed it. So credit where credit is due. Great. I think the message from this album was to the young people, keep dreaming, relax. I know what you're going through. They went through it. We understand what you're going through. It's a relatable message. Relax and keep dreaming. I think that's an important message, not just for the people in Korea. I think that's an important message worldwide. We live in a very different world, even from 2013 when this album came out. A lot of people go through so many stresses from what they see on social media, not just school, social media, everything. Everything is always consistently bombarding people, not just young people, old people too. They get affected by it as well. Older people get affected by it as well. But the young people are the most impressionable. They are the most vulnerable. So it's important to keep dreaming, never give up hope, J-Hope, <laughs> and do what makes you happy. Make some money, find stability. Don't throw away your happiness because of what everyone else around you is telling you what you should do. That's what I'm taking away from this one. Great message. Love this album. I don't believe in grades or numbers, you know, like a 10 out of 10 or an A plus or whatever. Um, but I think it's safe to say I love this album. Not just the music. The music is amazing. <laughs> but the message, which is more important, is what matters. It's a double... I like this album a lot. Double thumbs up. Love it a lot. Um, 10 out of 10, A+, plus, whatever you want to... 5 out of 5, whatever you want to say. Um, like I said, I don't believe in those numbers, but I want to, you know, basically convey. Love it. Great album. Great. Through and through. Choreography, if you watch the music videos, songs, everything. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I was really taken aback. Uh, they, uh, you know, I was expecting, you know, okay, okay, I might like this song, I might not like this one, that's, and that might, still might happen going forward, I might not like some songs, and I prefer other songs, but based off of We Are Bulletproof Part 2, No More Dream, Like, and the hidden track Road, amazing, 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 I am, I am ARMY. Even if, let's say hypothetically, I don't like any other other music, which we already know isn't true because I've listened to other music. If I don't like any other other music, this album alone has solidified me as a fan of them. Not because of the music, but because of what they stand for, at the minimum. But I do like their other music. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Uh, my favorite song is still DNA, probably, or Fake Love. But we're not there yet. <clears throat> anyway. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you for being a part of this. Good Lord, I don't know how long this video is. How long How long have I been recording? Wow. Okay, so this video might end up being a little... It might be 45 to an hour, maybe-ish. Maybe. Maybe a little bit less. I don't know. Let me know everything in the comments down below. What you want to tell me about the album. What do you think? Uh, did I miss anything? Uh, what, what effect did this album have on you? Are you ARMY from 2013? Are you late ARMY? 
Did you go back and listen to this one? Let me know everything and anything in the comments down below. Thank you for being a part of this long video. Thank you for being a part of this journey. We are still Baby Army. We are only one album in, and there are a lot more to go. I purple you. We got the we got the hearts, the Korean finger heart. Thank you. Stay positive. Stay hydrated. Keep dreaming. I'll see you, Army, in the next one.